afternoon to everyone uh, a big welcome on behalf of st javier's college chemistry department to you all i'm sure this particular career guidance webinar is going to help you all in planning your future in going ahead with your plans ahead especially in the times when new benchmarks are being set and the new normals are being created so without much ado i will request dr pralad rege to introduce our eminent speaker dr ajit datar and proceed from your own thank you over to pralad sir thank you sir thank you sir am i audible kail yes sir yes yes sir yes yes pralad good afternoon everyone myself dr pralad rege i am here to introduce dr ajit datar sir dr ajit datar is a well known personality in the field of academics as well as industry dr datar received his msc in 1971 phd in 1976 from university of mumbai he was recipient of department of atomic energy fellowship in 1971 carried out his phd research from analytical chemistry division of brc he is currently working as adjunct professor in khalsa college and visiting faculty at several other colleges in mumbai he has several publications in various national as well as international journals he is also a guide for phd in university of mumbai dr ajit datar is also associated with shimaitzu analytical india private limited as an advisor prior to shimaitzu he was with thermo electron and served this organization as general manager advanced mass spectrometry he was responsible for promoting advanced mass spectrometry products of thermo finigen in india he retired in 2007 after completing 58 years dr datar sir was also associated with sec cement company for about 12 years he has developed various methods for characterization of catalyst and the process product using catalyst he indigenously developed bet surface area analyzer and particle size analyzer the list is infinite so without any further delay i hereby request dr datar sir to take over the session thank you so very much hello over to you yeah. yes sir over to you, you sir we can hear you yes sir yeah you are able to hear me yes sir sure you can start yes, sir. sir yeah okay just a minute i'll just bring out the pointer and we'll start yeah okay so uh, good afternoon again to all of you and welcome for this particular webinar i definitely would like to thank st javier's college for inviting me for this webinar and would like to share whatever experience i have over last about 44 years of working in industry out of which about 30 years i spent in uh, uh, sales and marketing of analytical instruments i was traveling all over india during all that time and then i visited a lot of institutes a lot of industries a lot of people and developed very good contacts very good friends in many of these places and that has given me a lot of uh, inputs about what kind of opportunities exist in india for those graduates who are from chemistry or biology background and i started about a couple of years back i started giving this kind of information to the students and try to share whatever information i have meeting all these people meeting all these institutes so i'm not actually a career counselor but i have a rich experience in the field of uh, chemical sciences in the field of biological sciences and meeting several people several institutes several research organizations etc so i'm likely to share all this information with you during the uh, next one hour and i hope uh, you would find it very very interesting well let me begin i have uh, just put this slide particularly for the reason that uh, it gives you some information about me you have my email id here so in case you would like to uh, write something to me you can write to me on this email id and i will try to respond to you if you have any questions afterwards okay so i will just now stop my uh, video so that uh, i will not be able to be seen by you now so i will be able to communicate to you directly well let me go and go to my next slide okay so uh, we are talking about chemistry 
I am just putting some small information about chemistry, which you know. Chemistry touches every aspect of our life. Anything that can be touched, smelled, seen, felt is all made of chemicals. All of you know that. And that is why chemistry has one advantage that uh, chemistry graduate, chemistry postgraduate, he can be in pharmaceutical, he can be in metallurgical, he can be in, uh, in the polymer industry, he can be in uh, biotechnology also. So he has lots of options open for him because of this particular um, graduation which he has and that is from chemistry. So chemistry is the subject which in fact covers all the majority of the industries and that is why you have lots of advantage that you will be able to cover a lot of things and you have opportunities uh, existing in many places. Okay. Fine, so let us look at the fields in chemistry which we can talk about and I have just listed them alphabetically. A, B, C, D, and you'll find for almost every alphabet, there is uh, something related to chemistry. Okay, so uh, chemistry is there in every, as I said, every area or every field, and you have a lot of scope because of that. Well, we come to the question of uh, career. Okay, so there is a difference between job and career. So job is a current position of a person. So if you get a job, that doesn't mean you have started your career. Okay, so job is just a place where you are going to work. You have to plan for your career. Career is a lifelong process. It is not just getting a job and you say, I have started my career. Okay, yeah. But then if the job is where you are uh, beginning of your career, that is means uh, you have decided to get into one field and you got a job in that field itself, you can then develop that particular job into your career. You can few years, then change to the similar field in uh, uh, after a few years, and then you can develop, go on developing your career. But job need not be always a beginning of your career. So job is some opportunity which you have grabbed because you wanted to be somewhere. So job may not be always a career by itself. It is a current position of a person. And as I said, career is a lifelong process. So, and a career also could be more than one in, uh, one's life. Okay, so career is not only one particular field, it could be uh, many fields as well. Well, when you want to plan the career, you have to have attitude and passion for that. And then you should have a knowledge on the subject which you are thinking of developing your career on. And then you should have skills. And skills should be Many, at least you should have a good technical skills because we are talking about uh, technical things. We are chemistry graduates or chemistry post graduates. So we should definitely have some knowledge on uh, the technical subject. We should have communication skills. Okay, so this is very essential and I'm very happy that the current students uh, from uh, science background or even any background, they try to develop these communication skills. I have found generally when I take some exams and I listen to some of the presentations given by the students when they uh, present their project work or when they present anything related to a subject, generally they are very good communicators. So they have a good communication skills as such, which got developed definitely compared to when I was a student, the communication skills of the present generations are much better. Well, uh, what is to be uh, question mark is on the technical capabilities, technical knowledge on the subject. Okay, so another thing which is required is leadership quality. So the person who would like to develop his career should have a good leadership quality. Okay, uh, then when you talk about skill, just do not have the skills, you have to sharpen them also. So when you develop a particular skill, you have to make sure that you sustain that with you. It should not get forgotten, it should not uh, be uh, during the time it should not get lapsed okay so you should always uh, try to see that you sharp sharpen your skills that is very very essential well i did i have career opportunities in chemistry divided into four types one is a real interest in chemistry then professional interest in chemistry secondary interest in chemistry and commercial interest in chemistry so there are four branches. Let us try to talk first about real interest in chemistry. What do you mean by real interest in chemistry? That means you would like to work in the field of chemistry alone. You would like to do research. You would like to do teaching in chemistry. 
so you you want to develop yourself in a particular subject related to chemistry okay so real interest in chemistry professional interest in chemistry where you would like to work in any industry as a chemist and then you want to develop yourself in that profession if you join a pharmaceutical industry you want to develop yourself in a pharmaceutical industry in various positions and that becomes a secondary interest in chemistry and commercial interest in chemistry we will see as we proceed well real interest in chemistry the teaching in an education and institute this is one aspect the research in any of the csir or equivalent labs for that you have to clear net or upsc exams or any other competitive exams net is national eligibility test and i do not know if you have uh, if you are appearing for this test i do not know how many of you are appearing for this test tomorrow is the last date for making registration for it if you want to appear for this test tomorrow is the last day uh, because it got extended and as far as i know there is no change so 15th june is the last day for submission of your application for the net exam okay so if anybody is uh, not done it uh, he can have a last chance to do it tomorrow then if you want to get into a research teaching and research institutes there are lots of options you have iits nicos isers lots of universities agriculture universities medical colleges institutes veterinary universities and colleges and there are many many colleges by itself uh, those can offer you uh, teaching and research facilities so even in mumbai there are many colleges which have got uh, uh, you can register there for phd you can register there for msc by research but then you would definitely always like to work in the best institutes available so these are some of the iits nicors and isers are the best places where you can do your research okay and i for iit you can if you are a graduate you can apply for jams and uh, you can clear jam and then get into iit okay so there are similar kind of exams with nipers isers and you can apply to them and uh, get into iit phd and uh, that way you can get into uh, again i have put agriculture universities medical colleges and institutes all these places the chemist msc chemist or bsc chemist chemistry person can apply okay so uh, the chemistry has that advantage there are now 23 number of iits in india okay so i have put them and jam entrance test for msc in chemistry in almost all iits okay so you can apply anywhere or if you get selected uh, and your number comes up in the merit list you can get into any of these iits okay so there are so many iits i do not know how many of you know that there are 23 iits in india i have named some of them their places where they are and uh, in addition to that similar to iit bits pilani is another institute where people would like to be get in entry into and they also have similar kind of entrance exams for them for doing mscs and there are pilani in rajasthan where it started but now bits is there in goa as well as in hyderabad okay so there are two more additional complexes they have opened and you can get entry into any of those three institutes if you want to get okay then there are so many nipers now the hajipur hyderabad gandhinagar guwahati kolkata and raipurili nipur stands for a uh, pharmaceutical education and research national institute for pharmaceutical education and research so again if you decided to go into the pharmaceutical research you can enter two chemistry into this it is not necessary that you should have b pharm or m pharm the chemistry graduates or post graduates also can enter into nipers okay so these are the opportunities for you you can also enter into nipers there are so many isers and in isers mostly it is after 12th standard you can enter into any of those 5 uh, years uh, uh, integrated course but then after msc they take admissions for phd so you can clear net and then apply for isers and they have their own uh, interviews uh, for getting uh, admission for phd they give good uh, fellowships and you can get entry into kolkata pune mohali tiruvanantapuram bhopal tirupati bairampur and all these isers have chemistry as one of the subjects 
Well, there are lots of CSIR labs, okay, so uh, many, many CSIR labs, and they have their own facility for doing PhD. Okay, so you can do research over there. Many of these labs take uh, people on a project and pay them some kind of a fellowship and you can get entry into any of these uh, labs for doing the research. And they are all, uh, many of these labs are related to uh, chemistry. Okay, so even if you find the name of molecular biology, it is chemistry uh, graduates also can enter, chemistry postgraduates also can enter. Uh, you can see Central Drug Research Institute, Central Electrochemical Research Institute, Central Food Technology Research Institute in Mysore. So all these places are all CSIR labs and one can do a good research in many or any of these labs. I've just taken one example. This is CDRI Lucknow and they have uh, uh, facilities for PhD programs in chemical and biological sciences. Research areas are organic and medicinal chemistry, natural products, this is biology, pharmacokinetics and pharmaceutics, uh, toxicology, toxicology, molecular and structural biology. So you can figure out there is a chemistry involved in some of the subjects and where you can definitely get entry into. I've given another example of uh, CFTRI Mysore and they have a lot of PhD courses in the uh, PhD in sciences, biochemistry, bioscience, biotechnology, microbiology, food science, food technology, molecular biology, nutrition, Toxicology, residue analysis, that is the pesticide residue analysis or toxic analysis in food, etc. And again, there one can enter uh, through uh, net and you can get a JRA for SRF uh, fellowship there. Uh, okay, so that's possible. Then there are a lot of uh, CSR complex. In addition to that, there is a salt marine, marine chemical research institute in Bhavnagar where again, a chemistry graduates or postgraduates are required. Instead of genomics and integrative biology, instead of Himalayan bioresearch technology, where uh, it is in Palampur, a very beautiful place in Himalaya, where they do a lot of research on natural products. India, instead of chemical biology, Kolkata, in, and there I have again seen a lot of chemistry graduates and postgraduates are working. Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, IICT Hyderabad, it's a very prime institute on chemistry where uh, one can enter. Indian Institute of Petroleum in Dehradun, Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine, I am in Jammu, where a lot of work is going on in natural uh, medicines and uh, medicinal uh, plants. These are ICR institutes and deemed universities and national research centers. And there again, uh, you have Indian Institute of Toxicology Research, so toxic chemicals, Institute of Technology, Chandigarh, instead of uh, minerals and materials technology, again, uh, minerals and uh, materials. So, again, a lot of chemistry graduates are required. National Aerospace uh, Laboratories, Bangalore, Botanical Research Institutes, where uh, I know a lot of people there and they work in the field of uh, plants and research in the field of uh, uh, active ingredients from the plants. And, uh, they require a lot of chemists and analytical chemists. They have very good mass spectrometry labs. National Chemical Laboratory Pune, of course, is the main lab for chemistry graduates, chemistry postgraduates to do research. Then uh, there are a lot of uh, research and development in information of products. National Environmental Engineering Research Institute in Nagpur, where again, a lot of chemistry graduates and postgraduates are required. National Geophysical Research Institute, National Institute of uh, interdisciplinary Science and Technology, Tiruvanthapuram, National Institute of Oceanography in Goa. Again, there are three branches there. One is related to geo, uh, ocean chemistry, ocean geology, and ocean biology. So again, chemistry is one of the main division there. ICR Institutes, uh, Agricultural Research, where chemists can contribute a lot. And there is subtropical horticulture, temperature horticulture, uh, in Srinagar, arid horticulture in Bikaner, vegetable research in Varanasi. And what I'm talking about, many of these, 80% of whatever institutes I am uh, showing you here, uh, I have visited myself. So 80% institutes I have visited, so I know what kind of work is going on there. I met several people who are from chemistry background. They are not necessarily from biology or plant uh, sciences or botanical background. Okay, So there are lots of chemists who are uh, working there. Central Soil Water Conservation Research and Training Institute in Dehradun, Indians of Soil Sciences, Bhopal. It's again a chemistry person, 
uh, requirement there. These are all again ICR labs, and you'll find uh, there are a lot of labs for individual uh, uh, products. So you'll find there is a lab for uh, uh, grape research, there is a cotton research, and there is a pulses research. So there are various uh, products in food related or grains related, where uh, fruits related, where there are labs involved, and they definitely require chemistry background, especially analytical chemistry, is such a subject that it is required everywhere. Okay, so if you have good background of analytical chemistry, and I would definitely like to advise uh, the chemist, if you are from organic chemistry or you are from inorganic chemistry or physical chemistry, you should learn analytical chemistry uh, quite a bit because analytical chemistry is required in every field. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, field which is required in any of the applications which I'm talking here about. Okay, so uh, you can see natural resins and gums in Rachi. Cotton is there. Jute research is there in uh, Kolkata. Okay, I, I, more you can see uh, here wool research. You can see goats research. You can see buffalo research. There is animal nutrition and physiology. So you talk about uh, nutrition and food for animals so that they can give you better milk, better uh, the feed which is given to them has to be nutritious. Then uh, there is the Avian Research Center in Ijatnagar. Fisheries is main, one of the main uh, area where we do a lot of export of uh, fisheries, fish, marine products, especially to other countries. And you require to test these products for the quality. So uh, you require good analytical chemistry background here. Central of uh, brackish water agriculture. Uh, again, fisheries technology in Cochin, cotton research center in Nagpur, freshwater aquaculture in Bhuvaneshwar. So all these institutes which are related to agriculture and uh, though they are related to agriculture, the chemistry graduates and postgraduates and background in analytical chemistry is definitely required. And many of these institutes where agriculture is there, they definitely want to do the analysis of soil they would like to do the analysis of fertilizers which they use. They would like to find out the micronutrients in soil. They would like to find out the pesticide residues in the finished product. So all these are chemicals. They would like to use some uh, plant growth retardants. So all these are chemicals which they use and they would definitely like to do the analysis and they would like to know more about what kind of chemicals can be used in uh, the uh, agricultural industry which will affect the or which will increase the growth of the particular product. Then again you can see here citrus research, grape research is in Pune. It's a very huge and a big lab which they have and they have all analytical instruments with them. Uh, there is a banana center in Trichy, there is a spices research in many places. There is a pomegranate research center in Solapur and you must have heard that Solapur is declared just few days back as the one of the export center and pomegranate and as well as a lot of other products from Solapur are going to see a direct export from that place. So pomegranate is uh, one of the fruit which we like and which we eat and it has got a lot of nutritional property and even its uh, skin and uh, the plant has a lot of uh, medicinal property as well. Then you can see here again, and those are research centers on orchid, agroforestry, camel, equines, meat, pig. So almost every animal, every uh, uh, grain has, there is a rice research center, there is a wheat research center, there is a pulses research center. So you can find a lot of such facilities and a lot of such central labs are there in India. And about which generally, we do not know that these kind of uh, things exist in India. And these are at very odd places, odd places in the sense, much away from the big cities and uh, much comfortable life over there. You may not, the Bombay people do not like anything away from Bombay. They do not want to go away from Bombay. But then these are beautiful places and there is no Corona reached here so far. Okay, so many of these places, Corona has not gone there. Okay. So uh, it's up to you to decide which field you would like to work in. These are ICMR labs, again, related to medical research and medical field or healthcare industry is going to have 
lot of uh, future now. Okay, so a lot of these labs and national centers. Now you can see there is a National Institute of Epidemiology, Chennai. They are definitely working on Corona. There is a national. Uh, uh, you can see there is a virology center in Pune. We'll talk about that. National Institute of Occupational Health, NIH in Ahmedabad, which does uh, study of uh, occupational health hazards to the workers who are working in that particular area. So health, and we have seen the uh, uh, the the life of the health uh, staff which is working on Corona. This is occupational health hazard for them. They are working uh, day in and day out, serving the patients. And this is also one of the occupational hazard. Okay, so these people work in uh, related to chemical industry the, on the floor, working with the chemicals, and they can have a, a problem with respect to the health hazard. And this institute works in that area. Okay, so tuberculosis is there. Epidemiology, I already talked about. Then there is uh, malaria research. They have on pathology research. Then there is a medical statistics. So those who would like to work in the area of um, computer and statistics. There's a lab on National Institute of Nutrition. Nutrition is becoming very important now. And we talk about uh, having good resistance to Corona by having a good food and nutritional food. And people are talking about nutrition. So there is a big lab called as uh, National Institute of Nutrition in Hyderabad. Then there is a National Institute of Research in Tribal Health. So tribal health is becoming very important because a lot of uh, tribal people have a lot of health issues and uh, those issues need to be solved. Then uh, cholera and entry diseases. So this is also one of the lab which is very good. Center for Research in Medical Entomology. This is the institute which I'm talking about, National Institute of Virology in Pune, which is working on uh, the coronavirus now, they are trying to come out with a solution. They are the one who are trying to test all the kits which are there in the market for coronavirus testing. So any kit which comes up, uh, this institute has to say that this kit is good and then only it is uh, sent to hospitals for testing. Then these are all, uh, they, you probably know this, this is in Mumbai, NIRRH. And there are other labs in Mumbai which are in the premises of Hafkin Institute. Hafkin Institute, again, one of the major institute where they work on venoms of uh, snakes and uh, uh, scorpio. And uh, these are all uh, good labs where they are trying to develop uh, serum for that. Uh, then, yeah, so there, there is one lab in Pune which is related to it, it's called, called as Nari. These are all regional research centers, which also have a lot of research facilities. Bhuneshwar, Dibrugarh, Port Blair also has a research center, medical research center, and then a desert medicine research center in Jodhpur. So all these labs are important. Then there is a national center for laboratory science in Hyderabad. There is a ICMR virus unit in Kolkata, genetic research center in Mumbai, microbial contaminant complex in Pune, these are all institutes as well as deemed universities. Okay, so there, these are deemed universities. So they are capable of awarding a PhD degree because they are registered as a deemed universities. And you can say there is a national metallurgical laboratory in Jamshedpur. Uh, there is a national physical laboratory in Delhi. East, Northeast Institute of Science and Technology in Jorhat. Then there is a structural engineering research center in Chennai. So all these labs again are very, very important because they have, uh, they are deemed universities as well. Then there are other central government labs which are taking, uh, where there is an entry for chemists, CPCB, Central Pollution Control Board. Then there is a Central Forensic Science Lab. There is a Forest Research Lab. There is a Tea Board, Coffee Board, and there are so many such labs which central government has and they take a lot of students from chemistry background okay so only you have to go to their site find out the information because they that some of these advertisements would appear in the, the newspaper but some of them would be available on their sites okay these are defense research development establishment okay and there are many labs and i have listed some of them i have just highlighted some of them which do a lot of research on the explosives, on the 
various aspects of uh, chemicals related to explosion. So you can see there is one lab on explosives in Delhi. There is one lab in Pune. There is a high energy weapon material. This is again related to explosives in Hyderabad. There is a, a similar lab in Pune also, as I said. And uh, you can see some of the labs. Yeah, high energy lab in Pune. Uh, then instead of nuclear medicine and allied science in, uh, in uh, that is related to nuclear medicine in Delhi, these are all research labs. There is one lab which is called as Naval Material Research Laboratory in Ambernath, very close by. And they do a lot of uh, research on new materials which can be used in uh, naval ships, in submarine, etc. And this lab is doing very good work and they have a lot of chemists working there. Okay. Then there is a Naval Physical Oceanographic Laboratory in Kochi. Sorry. And there is another lab in Pune, research and development establishment uh, in Pune. And uh, there is another similar lab in Delhi. I want to tell you about this solid state physics laboratory in uh, Delhi. There is a terminal ballistic research laboratory in Chandigarh. And look at these two labs, DRD, Gwalior. They do work on toxic chemicals and warfare chemicals. Okay, so they, they are working in this area, very typical area. And this is uh, the lab which is uh, registered with United Nations and uh, they get a lot of samples related to warfare chemicals for testing purpose. And uh, especially uh, uh, the warfare chemicals can be used for uh, making mass uh, uh, fatality, especially for masses. And uh, these are the chemicals which need to be tested very regularly. And uh, the DRD Gwalior lab is meant for that. There is a defense food research lab, Mysore, which is doing a research in the food area, especially nutritious food, and especially working on the area of, now we have a lot of army people working in the area which is very difficult. Leh, Ladakh, and glacier area. The temperatures are very, very low. The quality of food which is to be given to them has to be different. The, uh, the army staff which is working in the area which is in Rajasthan and uh, uh, Kutch and Saurashtra area where the temperatures uh, during the daytime can go up to even 50 degrees and uh, very dry kind of a season and they have to survive there. So the quality of food which is to be supplied to them has to be different. So this lab in Mysore is working in a food research. Okay, So there are lots of openings available in the area of defense. Okay, So I'm just showing you one advertisement here which has come in 2020. 185 scientists post apply through this uh, um, this particular email and uh, the last date for application for this is 10th of July. So anybody who would like to enter into defense research, he has a good opportunity to work in that area. And so many requirement is there, 185 scientists are required. And many of us from this area, we do not apply for these kind of positions whether it is defense, whether it is agriculture, whether it is medical, uh, but which are the jobs which are offered by government of India. I can tell you one thing today that whatever salary which is offered by government today is much higher than whatever salary you may get in any of the pharmaceutical industries in Mumbai. Okay, so the salary which is offered to a fresh entrant into the, uh, these labs, would be two times the salary offered by the local pharmaceutical company. Okay, so I can tell you that. Much. Okay, so the salary structures in government has definitely improved. There was one time when people were talking about government jobs and uh, if the boys from uh, working from the government, the girl side would prefer that kind of a person. It has changed now, but now again, probably it would change again because government really offers good opportunities, good jobs. And now uh, every scientist is answerable for what he's doing uh, as far as research is concerned in the research institute where all these people are working now. Uh, there is definitely uh, justification one has to give about whatever work he's doing and people have become alert. And because of that, good quality work is coming out from many of these labs. Okay, So uh, one has to take advantage of that. 
Well, uh, there are a lot of government of India undertakings. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, fertilizer companies which are under government. There are a lot of steel uh, companies which are under government, like uh, uh, Steel Authority of India Limited, plants in Durgapur, Raukela, and all the uh, chemists are required. RCF is there right in Chembur, but there are a lot of uh, Rashtriya Chemical Fertilizer Units at various other places. There are some of them are under state government, some of them are under central government. Where there are good openings, Hindustan Antibiotics Limited, which is related to pharmaceutical. But then there are now a lot of uh, private pharmaceutical industries, but then there are some which are still working in the government of India undertaking areas. Then there is OHGC, which is a big uh, uh, organization. It is a government of India undertaking. You can say there are a lot of industries like the Corporation, uh, then Bharat Petroleum. Hindustan Petroleum, all these companies would require chemists for working on the petroleum products. So there is an Indian Institute of Petroleum in Dehradun, which is doing a basic research in the area of uh, petroleum. ONGC has again another unit in Dehradun and Ahmedabad, where they do basic research in oil exploration and uh, especially the work related to ONGC. So these are some of the places where one can definitely get opportunities it is also feasible for a candidate to get jobs as lecturers or assistant professors with top universities or colleges if they, of course, qualify for NET. And I have already, you know the site of NET, so I need not have to tell you that. But remember that tomorrow is the last day for registration for the examination. So you can apply for the NET exam tomorrow. Then there are a lot of state government organization. If you have, you clear MPSC exams, you can get as a chemist in a job into um, pollution control board so there is a maharashtra pollution control board there is sfcl state forensic science lab there are a lot of agriculture universities so you can also look for state government organizations uh, that is maharashtra state government organizations and labs jobs available there and they have beautiful labs mpcb labs in map in mape they have a big building with uh, pollution control lab and that's a very sophisticated lab, okay? So you can once visit and check what kind of... SFSL uh, is there in Kalina, Forensic Science Lab. Again, they have very good facilities and uh, they have branches elsewhere. You see, similarly, Maharashtra Pollution Control Board also has uh, several branches in other parts of uh, state. SFSL also has branches in other part of state, that is Nagpur, Pune, and uh, I think it is Aurangabad, they have branches there. Then there are agriculture universities which are quite good in uh, Maharashtra itself. So you can get opportunities there. And there are many other institutes. I have not named all of them, but state government organizations also can offer you job. Well, we come to the next part, professional interest in chemistry. That means you are getting into the industry. And of course, the best industry today to enter is pharmaceutical. This industry is going to flourish. It has lots of opportunities now because of the present condition of Corona. Right now, probably it is uh, not doing well. May, they may not be taking more people, but soon as the situation improves, they will come out with lots of opportunities. They will come out with a lot of advertisement, a lot of openings in pharmaceutical industries. Similarly, CROs, uh, that is track research organizations, they will also flourish as new drugs are coming up in market for various diseases and these need to be tested for clinical trials and CROs generally do that, that kind of a job. Drug discovery, so R&D in uh, drug discovery is going to be a major area where a lot of people will work. Fermentation processes, again, uh, biotechnology related work. So uh, you, again, a chemist is required there. Catalysis is one field, fertilizers I already talked about. There are a lot of private fertilizer companies where one can get entry. Cement is one area. And there are lots of cement factories and the construction is always going to be there. Either it is a government sector or private sector, construction always is going to get uh, flourished in any way, way, anywhere. Nanotechnology, not yet come to that extent, but probably may come in near future. Polymer industry is growing. Agrochemicals are growing because agriculture is the main area and we have to produce a lot uh, for feeding our own generations. Plus, we have to export a lot of uh, products to other countries. So 
agrochemicals are going to be again a major area where a lot of um, factories are coming up they are coming with new products metallurgical is another field uh, there are a lot of private as well as um, government sector metallurgical labs you must have heard about hindustan copper hindustan zinc birla is there in aluminium industries in a big way so there are lots of private uh, foundries which are there for metallurgical uh, industry there is companies who are working even in the area of platinum hindustan platinum is there where they work in the area of uh, generating platinum and platinum alloys and then uh, food processing and food testing labs are coming up in a big way you must have heard about fssai and fssai is registering several labs for food testing and food testing is going to be a future there are lots of food testing labs coming up and they require good chemists to work on various uh, testing which is which need to be done because whatever products we are exporting need to be tested for pesticide residues they need to be tested for uh, microbial contamination that should be tested for toxic uh, compounds that should be tested for toxic uh, elements like arsenic lead mercury etc so food testing is very very important and a uh, lot of such labs are coming up even in mumbai there are at least about dozen of labs who are doing food testing okay so apart from food there are a lot of other testing labs which are private and they do lot of testing of uh, uh, water pollution they do air pollution studies there are a lot of labs who are doing metallurgical uh, testing there are a lot of labs who are testing packaging materials etc so there are a lot of testing labs which have come up and there are so, so many labs around mumbai also wherever industries are there there are a lot of testing labs around so bombay pune nasik you will find lot of testing labs okay. then there is a diagnosis lab okay so diagnosis labs are going to be definitely going up because uh, diagnosis is one of the area which is uh, getting highlighted because of this corona disease and there are lot of private labs which have come up in last few years and you must have heard about srl you definitely have heard about uh, thyrocare which has got a bad name currently but then uh, that's a lab which is a very very sophisticated lab then there is a metropolis lab and there are a lot of other labs which are coming for diagnosis and clinical testing and they have all modern analytical instrument for testing most of these labs have gcms and lcms and spectroscopy equipments icpms etc for testing the uh, blood and serum and other biological samples so professional interest is definitely the uh, lot of growth potential is there and government has uh, recently invested a lot of money into these especially those who would like to be new in this area and would like to have a product which will be indigenously manufactured government would like to support them and a lot of these companies will try to have some of the products indigenously available because uh, probably the dependency on china is going to get reduced and we will try to have many products which are getting developed indigenously uh then secondary interest in chemistry now this is a difference uh, which is uh, think out of the lab out of the box so totally different sales of analytical or process instruments chemicals specialty products uh, which are required for chemical industry so one can get into the cells now this cells is different than the other kind of a cells job which you generally do a salesman doing here it is a technical cell so you are talking about the technology you are not talking about just uh, trying to convince uh, the Uh, the ordinary customer you are trying to convince the uh, technical people for selling product okay so it's a highly qualified kind of a job and even uh, there are a lot of phd's who are into this job who feel that they can convince the customer they have good product and they would be able to convince the customer about the capability of their product in solving the problems of the customer here it is more of a job which is so solving a kind of a job so you give a solution to the customer make him understand whatever product you have and try to sell him i mean in fact i spent about 20 odd years in this particular area and that is how i traveled all over india not 
even in india i traveled abroad for initially getting the training then subsequently giving the training so i traveled a lot uh, during uh, last about uh, 25 years or so uh, all over india and that is how i met all these people in the institutes and the industries which i talked about in all parts of india uh, so this is one field which you can think of and uh, there are especially uh, you have a lot of uh, possibilities to come up in this particular area if you have some kind of aptitude to get into the marketing or selling of the product then chemical informatics this is a new field which is coming up bioinformatics which you have already heard about and uh, of course a lot of biological background people go there but chemical informatics is for chemistry people then if somebody has good communication skill especially good writing skills he can do abstracting writing or publishing articles in related uh, to chemistry in journals and uh, there are a lot of opportunities there i get at least a couple of mails every day whether i am interested in this kind of activities okay so intellectual property is another area i am giving you some references here where you can apply and get entry into this area which is very very important area patenting i am giving you some references below which are for chemometrics and these are the places where you can apply some of them have the courses which are online so you can apply there and complete the course add to your profile some additional skills additional qualifications so uh, these are some of the uh, best uh, things we can do when you are free now commercial interest in chemistry okay so uh, there is if you want to be a entrepreneur by yourself and you must have uh, if you have uh, read about in the newspaper our finance minister and go government of india is after starting new uh, production unit or new entrepreneur who would like to start something new and they would like to support him they are creating soft loans and uh, you can think of some new product which import substitute and definitely government will support you well, this kind of interest you can think of manufacturing chemicals another thing is distribution business in chemicals glassware equipment analytical instruments etc so you can be a distributor you can have your own office you can have a uh, attachment with some chemical manufacturer and you try to sell his product glasswares borosil or any other companies glassware equipments like ph meters and then uh, there are many other equipments you know like uh, uh, conductivity meter ph meter ovens etc okay so you can think of equipment selling analytical instruments also can be uh, you can be a distributor for them uh, yourself so you set up your own office you set up your own staff and start working with uh, some of these companies for that of course it is better to get some experience in sales or marketing of these products initially and think of starting your own organization as a distribution business then post graduate management degree for getting a job in finance administration and marketing in chemical industry so you can do a diploma in management or post graduate degree in management and work in chemical industry uh, so that you keep in touch with your chemistry background but do a job in administration finance or marketing of uh, the uh, in, the, in particular industry okay well there is one more branch which i had not listed before no interest in chemistry okay there could be some people who have now chemistry is enough i would like to get into into some other field the law could be one hr management counseling and then defense short service commission after graduation so you can directly enter into a military or navy or air force anywhere with a short service commission if you are having a good physic and good uh, capability or you are getting into defense you can try that you can get into civil services through i become ias or ips again upsc exams need to be clear but one thing i need to tell you that in upsc exams ias or ips exams there is 100 mark paper on chemistry there so if you choose that as one of your option you are sure that you will definitely pass into that then you have to only work for the rest of the papers because one of the paper could be chemistry 
and then it will make you easy your life easy because you have to uh, you have the knowledge of that subject and you have to only uh, get some additional knowledge on the other subjects okay only request to do uh, do not become a civil servant work for nation work for the poor people and get some benefit to our own poor people in the areas where you are working in the district or uh, the station where you are working okay uh, this is sad our civil servants are neither servants nor civil situation is going to change slowly but then unless uh, people like you who are honest who would like to do something for the nation enter into this field the situation will not change there is something all of you know the management degrees are available from the iims or bajaj or bellinger and many other institutes which give you uh, the management degrees and uh, those can be useful to get a good job but then there is something called as rural management and there are courses available in these places council of advancement of rural technology in new delhi national institute of rural development in hyderabad center for application of science and technology for rural management in kotrur pune and there is an institute of rural management anand in gujarat anand is a very good example where they have got this uh, uh, cooperative uh, business coming up by uh, uh, late uh, dr kurian who started this uh, concept and he has brought out the amul which is a brand now and that has come through the rural development and the course is available in uh, this place uh, where you can become a uh, post graduate in the rural management and as we know that uh, the real growth is required in those rural areas otherwise what has happened is uh, most of these workers are moving from their villages to mumbai and uh, or any other big cities and those cities are getting uh, too much of a population and that becomes difficult to manage and we have seen what is happening in mumbai because of overpopulation and less facilities for health and uh, those kind of problems are getting created but if we have a good rural management and the growth happens there in those areas the workers would be able to get jobs over there and uh, the, it will be uniform growth everywhere and that will give a boost to the growth of the country by itself and that is why i am at um, i do not know whether advertising for rural management that those who are interested yeah adana adana for rural management well i am coming to the last part where i would like to talk about covid 19 and the what is happening because of covid 19 to all of you today okay we are all going through the most radical transformation uh, the world has ever seen people are just justly terrified excited depressed heartbroken and hopeful all at once okay so uh, this is the current situation but that is going to change hang in there as better times are ahead okay so that is going to happen challenge and adversity are meant to help you know who you are storms hit your weakness but unlock your true strength so uh, your true strength will come out because of these kind of situations and once you know your true strength you know where to go so first question i am sure one question will come to you when you are going to face your interviews uh, after you pass out and you appear for any interview one question they will definitely ask you what you did during lockdown i am just giving you some of the options which uh, are possible arranging or cleaning your laptop or desktop okay so you have a lot of files arranged uh, everywhere and uh, you sometimes find it very difficult to search so if you arrange your laptop or desktop properly it will become easier for you to search the information organizing your papers notes and files okay so that's a uh, hard copies of whatever you have you can look at them and arrange them properly reading related or unrelated books or articles related to your subject unrelated anything whatever you feel it's good whether you are doing it or not daily physical exercises or yoga uh, are you doing it or not i mean that's what you could have done during the lockdown learning or relearning language 
craft, drawing and painting, because some of you probably during your past might have learned some language, maybe Japanese, maybe German. And over a period of time, you have forgotten because you don't get time to do uh, sharpening that. So whether you can use this time uh, for learning or relearning of any of these languages or craft or whatever skills you have, sharpening the skill and this is one thing. And basics is something because when you try to learn the chemistry and suppose you are working in the field of say organic chemistry, you tend to forget analytical or physical chemistry, which is part of the chemistry as a whole. You become maybe strong in organic chemistry, but you forget the basics of physical chemistry that is not good. So you have to sharpen those skills. Okay, so that is what is required. So basics you have to be always uh, keep in mind that your basics should be always strong. Well, you must be doing something like this, assisting the domestic work, visiting virtually places, museums, science paths, etc. Because you can't, but you can be virtually there. You can look at the touring places, museums, science parks, and try to get information about what is available in the world in all these areas and try to visit them and uh, try to get more information about such things. Have you achieved proficiency on computer? So you, if you have a computer, desktop or laptop, have you got a proficiency on that? Do you know how to effectively use your computer? How to download the information properly, etc. So this could have been done. Then what you did during the lockdown, this is the question and these are the kind of answers they expect. How many webinars you attended on which subjects? What you learned from those webinars? Okay, so as you are attending this webinar, you must have attended several other webinars which are concerned with a particular subject related to chemistry. Then how many of such webinars you attended, on which subjects you attended? What, what skills are developed during this period? Have you planned activities when the lockdown was getting extension? So there was initial lockdown for 15 days, then lockdown was extended for another 15 days. First 15 days probably it was so sudden that you could not plan something. But when it was extended further, you could have planned something now that another 15 days I'm getting, what should I do? So have you done that kind of work? Now again, uh, your colleges are not starting. You have a lot of free time. So are you going to use this lockdown period effectively in next few days, which are still available for you? If you do not have to appear for the exam, you have already cleared your first year or second year and you are getting into second or third year. Uh, you don't have to appear for the exam, but your school or college, or especially college is not going to start. So look for something which you can do in this period, okay? Have you thought about your future plans? Okay, so have you done some work, your cell phone work, about what you are going to do in future? One of the question which will be asked to you is also uh, what you want to be and can you expect where you would be after 10 years? So these kind of questions which will be asked to you and you should be prepared to answer. There could be one question, what is COVID-19? Okay, so these could be questions in your interview. You should be ready for such kind of answers because uh, the, the candidate who is coming for the interview, the interviewer would definitely like to know how he has spent this time which was made available to him for more than about two months, what he did during this time. Post-COVID-19 situation, the current scenario, no vacancies, we are closed, no position for freshers. This is going to change, definitely going to change. In a few months from now, the chemistry has a bright future. The manufacturing getting shifted from China. So this is what is I, I was talking about. So Made in India initiative would come. Government pumping more money and giving soft loans for industries to come into the area where they can manufacture something of their own and it could be import substitute product. Specialty chemicals to flourish. Okay, So loss of China and getting into India uh, with the Indian manufacturers definitely would have great advantage. This is what is coming in the newspaper. Loss of China 25% share as a reliable partner and uh, continue to shift from it, EU, Japan by about 17%. Uh, that is a mean share of India, which is currently 3%, will rise 
meaningfully during this period. Availability of talent in chemistry and engineering will have to be an advantage. So remember, this is the article, the lines which I have taken from an article, and he's specifically talking about talent in chemistry. Okay, so you can imagine what is expected. Okay, pharma is uh, going to be a key player during post-COVID. Pharma industry post-COVID-19 is a, it is already getting geared up. It it understood its plus points to be able to make a final draft. So APIs can be made very easily. We are making a lot of formulations and we are making active pharmaceutical ind ingredients very well. But we are depending on China for the raw materials. So that dependency is going to get down. The big pharma giants have decided to have no dependency on China. And that will give a lot of opportunities for chemists who would like to enter into a pharmaceutical industry. Try to do some courses which are offline, and these are beneficial to you to get entry into any of the pharma industries as well as other industries related to healthcare, related to uh, agricultural, everywhere, because Q and QC are going to be main things, and quality assurance and quality control, these are the courses which are available offline. Quality by design, okay, these are the courses available, so you can, uh, register them and these are available on, online. Quality management system, QMS, okay. So courses on quality assurance, these are the courses available at these places in Mumbai. Okay, so uh, uh, this is available, off, you can get it online. These are the courses uh, you can register and you can get registered with them. And these are all virtual courses. Garwara Institute and in Kalina, Government Polytechnic, uh, in Bandra, and there are many such institutes and they have many more courses, not only one course, which is on quality assurance. QBD course, quality by design. This is a new trend which is coming up in industry. And this is course which is offered by IGMPI in Delhi. And you can contact them and uh, you can register with them on online course. Online. And uh, you can uh, definitely uh, do this course, which is very, very important course in industry, especially quality by design. Okay, so there is another course offered by uh, this SSA Business Solution Private Limited, which is in Mumbai. There is IPR related courses, patent related courses, and these are available in, uh, of course, Federation, it is in uh, Delhi. This is the email address of that. And there are these three core, uh, institutes which offer these courses, Institute of Intellectual Property Studies, IIPS in Mumbai, NMIMS Mumbai in Parley, they offer the course. Government Law College Churchgate, they offer this course on IPR related. So uh, this is again a new trend and people would like to get into patent. Then they can do a law also that will give them additional qualification. And you can become, a, I mean, you can get a job also in a pharmaceutical industry once you clear this course. And also you can start your own practice as a patent uh, attorney or patent related person or expert in patents. Well, I would like to stop here. I think I have come up to the time which was allotted to me. So any questions you have, you please put it on chat. And I wish you all the best. Take care of yourself. Remember two lines. You should not get scared about the corona, but you should definitely take care. Don't get scared, take care. That is one which I would like to tell you and follow the lockdown. This is the individual lockdown you have to follow. Government probably has opened up, but you should follow your own lockdown so that you can knock down the Corona. Okay. So uh, follow these two instructions, take care and follow the individual lockdown so that Corona will not affect you. Okay. So best of luck. And I'm sure, uh, you will have a great success in your life and I wish you all the best. I wish you long life and uh, the great success. In uh, Sanskrit we say that Dirgha Yushi Bhava Yashasvi Bhava. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much sir for your time. Uh, there are a few questions which have come up yeah, on sure. our chat box. So I, I'll uh, yeah, I will come on. Uh, so, uh, yes, you yeah. can just put your camera yes, in students. Can I start the question in the session? Yeah. yeah. 
So the first question that we have is what are the competitive exams required? Oh, sorry, to can you repeat it? Yes. Uh, what are the competitive exams required to enter the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, NIPERS? No, NIPER has their own tests. So once you get to their site, you will know what kind of uh, exams they have. It is, NIPER is not through the net. Okay, CSR labs have through the net, but NIPER by itself is a different institute. And like ISERS have their own, NIPER has their own tests. Okay, so because there are seven NIPERs and one test is conducted by all the NIPERs together. Okay, so NIPER, ISERS have their own tests. Okay, the yeah. next question is, uh, when can one give a net exam? Is it possible only after master's? Uh, yes, unfortunately, yes, it is only after master's. Because yeah. uh, generally, uh, it gives you entry for your PhD or you can become a lecturer. So there are two options which are available to you. So uh, net is only available after master's. And I would generally would like to add, um, I mean, advice to most of the graduates uh, they should try to acquire some postgraduate degree. Okay, so uh, try to go for post-graduation, get a postgraduate degree, and then if they want to build up their career in pure chemistry or chemistry-related subjects, then it is better that they should do their post-graduation. Unless they want to diversify into other fields, like uh, the professional courses which I talked about, QA, QC, and uh, patent, and all those kind of things. You need not have to have a post-graduation there. They can go after graduation. They want to do management, they can go after graduation. Yes. But if they want to get into a pure science and they want to get into R&D, in, even in private industries, they should better do uh, MSc. Okay. okay. The next question is, uh, would an analytical chemistry or an organic chemistry masters be better? Okay. Now, mm -hmm. of course, uh, both have good scope. Organic chemistry has a good scope. I mean, currently, if you talk about, I did my MSc, I had no analytical chemistry. Analytical chemistry came into existence in 1975. And initially, for quite a few years, analytical chemistry was last. So first was organic, followed by physical, followed by inorganic, and then analytical. But the situation changed. Analytical became first, then organic, then physical and inorganic. So currently, if I'm right, analytical is first, organic is second. So depending upon the liking of a person, he can go either for these two. Organic chemist also has a good opening in pharmaceutical, in drug development areas where R&D is involved. So he has a good opening in pharmaceutical industries with that. But the number of positions which are available there are less. But the analytical chemist, has a lot of opening because the number of positions available as analytical chemists are much more than the organic chemists. I mean, if he really wants to become a good organic chemist and get into synthesis area and a research in synthesis of a drug development kind of a thing, then there are less positions available there. So competition would be good. There would be a lot of competition coming from the pharmacy background people also. The infarm people would try also to compete with that. But the analytical chemist is definitely required in in quality control area, analytical method development area. So the opportunities there are much more. Yeah. Okay. So the next question is, uh, can one be able to do a master's in quantum mechanics after a graduation in chemistry? Uh, I doubt. I have never seen a quantum mechanics by itself as a course. It may be there. I am not very sure it, in Kalina campus because of that BRC, <laughs> some kind of um, collaboration there. If, that, if they are offering a quantum mechanics course, uh, it is possible probably. I am not very much aware of that. But I have not seen a quantum mechanics as a full time MSc course. It may be abroad, but I have not seen such a course in India so far. And how, what kind of openings it would have? You have to get into TRC or TIFR or such kind of places only. Or go abroad for 
higher studies in quantum mechanics. Uh, what are the qualifications required to get into the perfume making industry? Yeah, there are some courses related to perfume. There are some, uh, I, I, I can send the information to him if he's interested in uh, this particular area, what are the courses available. But what is required is your uh, MSc in organic chemistry or analytical chemistry may be able to give you entry into any perfume industry. And there are special courses. I think SH Kelkar uh, College has some courses on perfumery related to perfumery industry. So he can uh, apply there. He can look at, I know the course there. I can send him information on that. But SH Kelkar has a college in Mulun. Hmm. They have a course on uh, perfume related subjects. Okay. So he can get entry through that. The next question is, uh, especially for Mumbai, uh, what is the scope for food chemistry after graduation or post-graduation? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, now, food chemistry has, uh, uh, there are two options for him. One is getting into some nutraceutical uh, field and get a job into nutraceutical area. And uh, there are a lot of uh, pharmaceutical industries who are starting a nutraceutical division by itself. So uh, there is a good opening for him there. Or otherwise, there are food testing labs which are uh, coming up. And there are food processing industries where he can get entry into. A lot of food processing and packaging industries which are coming up. But again, the opportunities in India, in Mumbai are very less. Hmm. To go out somewhere. And there are lots of food processing uh, industries are coming up. And uh, he can get definitely entry into that. Even the Reliance has come up with a food processing lab and food processing setup in uh, Belapur Road. So they have their own uh, Reliance stores where they uh, have a food processing setup there. And they have a food testing labs and uh, food processing labs. Okay. So there are few. Gudre uh, has something related to food processing. Yes. No, very true. In but terms of, uh, of things available for that is very less. Correct. Yeah. If you want food chemistry, normally I think it would be Italy or UK. You could also look at Society of Chemistry yeah. in London. Heston Blumenthal yeah. is one of the major chefs who does chemical gastronomy as a subject there. Anyways, so the next question okay. is, what is the scope for a PhD or job after analytical chemistry out of India? Yeah, there are, there is a good scope for that. Uh, after PhD in uh, analytical chemistry or uh, uh, bioanalytical chemistry, which is a new subject, a uh, lot of students have gone abroad for their higher studies. And uh, I know at least about 20 students from bioanalytical side or analytical side who have got a, uh, uh, jobs as well as uh, further higher studies, postdoc studies in USA or in Germany or many other places, Australia also. New Zealand also. So there are a lot of people who have gone abroad after PhD in analytical chemistry or uh, any other or bioanalytical chemistry, which is related to analytical chemistry. Yeah. So, a few more questions we will take on. Uh, so yeah. some of them, so what are the skills required to get into a research laboratory? In a research laboratory? Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, your basic knowledge on the subject is very important. Your communication skills need to be improved or you should have a good communication skills. You should be a, a person who should work in a team because in a research, current situation is that nobody can do any individual anything. You have to work in a team. So when you are working in a team, you should be a team person. So you have to develop yourself as a team member. And for that, you have to have a good communication with everybody. So communication skills are very much essential apart from your basic knowledge, basic skills, which are there, which come along with the subject. The subject skills are very required. In addition to that, the communication skills are very, very essential. You should be able to uh, talk to other people. You should be able to talk very easily to your boss and uh, in very nice way. And uh, you should be able to convince your people, convince your boss about what you are doing. And is very, very important that how you communicate and how you convince your people. Okay, so that is very, very essential. That is a skill which one has to develop. 
Okay, so, so the question is a win one from many people is the scope for forensic sciences, some from mm. MSc analytical, some from MSc organic, and what is the scope mm. in Mumbai and in India particularly? Yeah, in Mumbai, there is only one lab as on today, that is forensic science lab. And uh, there is very little scope here because that lab can have hardly about two or three openings per year, not more than that. But overall, uh, the forensic science labs are expanding at many places. As new states have come, new labs have come. There is a central forensic science lab everywhere at many places, at all big cities, like all the metropolitan have a central forensic lab. In addition to uh, forensic science, there are something which is related to that, like uh, analysis of toxic compounds, okay, steroids, drugs, drug trafficking. So there is a lab which is working on drug trafficking related things. Sports doping, which is again, I mean, related, uh, the compounds which we are talking about are similar. Okay, so if one has a good experience in a forensic science lab, he can look for all these kind of options. Okay, so it need not be only a forensic uh, science, but it could be anything related to uh, steroids, anything related to drug trafficking, anything related to such sports doping, and then horse race doping. Horse race also are, there are labs, equine, uh, equine uh, labs are there, where he can get entry into. So there, if somebody does MSc in forensic science, then he can also look for all these options. Because in uh, Mumbai, in Elfiston College, there is a forensic science lab. Okay. And uh, there is a forensic science department by itself who offers MSc in forensic science. There is a there is a very big forensic science university. Uh, that's a very big institute there, which, which offers PhD in forensic science also. So uh, the if somebody's MSc in forensic science, he has to do PhD, he can go there in Gandhinagar and complete PhD over there. And then he can look for all such kind of options. And more the qualification or more the speciality you have in the forensic science, the better would be your job opportunities. Okay, so you have to develop some kind of a speciality in forensic science by itself. Then you can have a good opportunities. Okay. Next. Next question, what is the role of a chemist in a medical or a microbiological lab? Hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, medical labs, you require chemist. There is something called as therapeutic drug monitoring. Okay, where the drug is given to the patient and you are trying to monitor the drug uh, afterwards. Okay, so in his urine and things like that. So that you monitor. So. Uh, all such kind of cases, they use uh, the instruments like LCMS. Okay, they use spectrophotometer, they use uh, fluorimeter, they use atomic absorption. Now, Armed Forces Medical College in Pune, they have all these equipments. You go to KEM lab, KEM hospital here, they have a lab which does uh, have a LCMS. And they require chemists to analyze the samples of uh, these compounds or drugs after the operation gets over and the drug is given to the patient, they want to monitor the drug in his urine and uh, the blood uh, as far as the patient is there in the hospital. All such All kind such of things require the chemist. And uh, if you go to the hospital, there are all the equipments in that lab and there are chemists working there. Okay, so medical field, you require chemists. Okay. Kyle, sir, uh, we'll just take, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess a few questions more. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to take the last two questions. Yeah, last two uh, questions. Uh, okay. fine, yes. Fine. Oh, so yeah. the last two questions would be, uh, sir, there's some students who are asking about areas in the cosmetic industry mm -hmm. and its scope in Mumbai and India. Uh, there, are, there is a scope in Mumbai, but again, a little scope. There are a few companies who are offering the cosmetics the kind of a research in Mumbai. But Bangalore has good opportunities and many other places. But the kind of uh, opportunities in Mumbai, there are good courses on cosmetics also. Okay, so you can do a cosmetic technology and uh, get a job in cosmetics also. But the availability of industries in this area are much less compared to 
in other cities, especially Bangalore and Hyderabad and many other places, there are good cosmetics uh, industries. There are only few in Mumbai. I think only a couple of them are in Mumbai. There are hardly anything in Mumbai. Okay. Okay. And the last question, yes. sir, is it be the role of a chemist in the defense area? How could we as chemistry students, graduates or postgraduates get into the chemistry line? No, no, I, I did not get the question. Can you repeat it? Yeah. The question is, how could chemists play a role in the defense sector? As graduates or postgraduates, how would we play a role in the defense sector? Yeah. Now, as I said, I have already given the advertisement, which is 10th of July is the last date for submission of your application for that. And there are seven chemists, more than seven chemists are required in various places in the defense labs. Now, in defense, they do a lot of research, okay, related to material science. They do a lot of research related to explosives. The, they do a lot of relate, uh, research in related to high energy materials. Those who, by burning, they produce high calorific value kind of materials. So they do a lot of research in that area and they do a lot of research in materials by itself uh, with respect to the safety of the, uh, the armed forces. Okay, so they do a lot of research in that area. Bulletproof jackets we talked about. No? So all those kind of things. Bulletproof cars. So material science is a very big research which is going on there. So all these areas, they require good chemists. Without chemists, it is not possible to do this kind of a research. Unless you have a good material testing facility available at your end, you cannot do this kind of a research. And for material testing, you require analytical chemists. You require a chemist to develop those materials so, defense requires good chemists. And I have visited all these defense places. I have visited Pune, uh, this high energy explosive lab, which has got PAD in chemistry uh, people there. And the, the, the scientific assistant staff are all MSc in chemistry. Okay, so they, they require a lot of chemists. DRD Gwalior, where they are doing warfare chemical research, they, they have requirement of a lot of chemists there. Okay, so chemists okay. are required in defense and it's a good opportunity. And I never find anybody coming, going from Mumbai to uh, those labs. Okay, we, don't know, we are not aware of these kind of openings at all. Anyways, sir, there's one very common question through this whole list. I think if you could just brief it really short, is yeah. what is your view on a PhD in any field of chemistry abroad, abroad particularly? So this is a very uh, common whether question. Whether to do PhD there. abroad or PhD in yes. India. Yes. Okay. Yes. No, definitely, if you do a PhD in abroad with a, with a good university, yeah. it has definitely a value today. Okay. And uh, if you do a PhD by net, passing net exam, or you do PhD in IITs or ICT or some good institutes, it also has a good value in India. Okay, so where you do PhD has definitely an influence in getting a good job. Okay, so if you have a good PhD from abroad, from a good university, it has definitely value. And if you have a PhD from any such institutes like IIT, NIPER, ISER, ICT, and all these places, it also has a value. Okay, so it's up to you whether you want to do PhD abroad or you want to do PhD in India. Okay, great. Both have uh, Hello, Kyle. Yes, yes sir. I'll, yeah. I'm closing yeah. it up, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Closing. So, uh, anyways, uh, with respect to this, uh, whoever has any other questions in this chat box, we have put uh, yeah. Dr. Ajit Datar's uh, email ID. Uh, yeah. We have all, we'll also put it on our WhatsApp group so you all can contact him with your further questions. He would be happy to help, I, I'm sure about that. Uh, with that, I would like uh, Dr. Nikhila Butt from the Chemistry Department to uh, address a little voter in this webinar. Uh, over to Dr. Nikhil Labat. Thanks, Kyle. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Honorable Dr. Ajit Datar, sir, and all the participants. It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks in this webinar. I, on behalf of Department of Chemistry, St. Xavier's College, Mumbai, and the members of ZAC, that is Xavier's Association of Chemistry, would like to extend a very sincere vote of thanks to the Honorable Delegate 
who blessed us with his presence and took out valuable time of his busy schedule the guidance that you have offered to the students through this enlightening session will surely give them a direction to set up new goals in their life thank you sir on this i would also like to quote choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life with this i must mention a deep sense of appreciation to professor mazwan kotwal sir the head of our department and dr rajendra shinde sir principal st xavier's college mumbai for providing us with all the assistance to this webinar also i would like to extend a special thanks to dr pralhad rege sir who has worked hard to bring to us a wonderful resource person thanks to mr kyle mayors and to dr karuna ma'am vice principal academics at jewel college mumbai for all the technical assistance throughout this webinar and also i would extend my gratitude to ms neha kapadia for the creative work put up in this webinar above all i would also like to thank all the faculty members of the department and all the participants who have wholeheartedly participated in this webinar i am sure you must have benefited through this webinar and you have ga gained all the answers to all your queries thank you one and all thank you also, thank you so much thank you thanks mr thank you. thank you also please note a feedback form will be sent on the whatsapp group and only on filling up the feedback form you will receive your e certificate please mention your email id correctly in the feedback form thank you thank you so much so with this i think we could uh, end the, the webinar gathering thank you so much sir Pralat, thank you thank you once again and thank you so much that it was all your work everything went on very well so well good arrangements were made and uh, everything went on very smoothly uh, because of all your efforts okay so thank you